G'day and welcome. In my last video we looked at the unit circle and how by placing a right angle triangle within it we are able to redefine our sine and cosine values or ratios and to draw a number of conclusions. One was that we could find the sine and cosine of any sized angle. We were no longer restricted to angles less than 90 degrees and also we inherited two identities. So let's redraw this very quickly. So we have our x and our y axis. And because it's a unit circle, that should be underneath, classically, <laughs> that should be underneath. We try and keep the numbers away from the first quadrant where we do most of our work. Uh, we draw a right angle triangle and if the radius is 1, we learn that this height was sine theta, if that's theta, and this base is the cosine of theta. And from it, we learned that tan theta was sine theta and cos theta. That was the first identity that we gained. And the second, by applying Pythagoras' theorem, was that we learned that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. So that's where we're up to. Where does it lead? Well, by combining these and understanding our what we call our reciprocal ratios in trigonometry, that is our cotangent and cosine and cosecant, we can get two more equations. There are three identities. This is the first one, the three trigonometric identities. The second one has a one here instead of there, and the third one has a one here. There's no particular order. Well, let's put a one here to start with. What would I divide cosine squared by to get one? Cosine squared theta. Well, the answer is by itself divided by cos squared theta. Which, of course, we can do as long as it's not worth zero. I'm not going to go into that right at this moment, but there we go. So cos squared theta over cos squared theta is one. What is sine squared theta over cos squared theta? Well, we've just discovered that sine over cosine of theta is tan theta. So the square of it is going to be tan squared theta. Still maintain the plus sign, retain the plus sign. So, that we've been able to fix up because of our first identity. What is 1 over cosine? Well, using our reciprocal ratios, this is the secant of theta. So, 1 over cos squared will be sec squared theta. By the way, the way I was taught to remember the reciprocals is that 1 over tan theta is cotan theta, 1 over cos theta is sec theta, and 1 over sine theta is cosec theta. And I was taught that each expression has co in it once. Now there are other ways of remembering it, but there you go. 1 over cosine, because it's got the co, it's just ordinary secant, not cosecant. That's our second trigonometric identity. And we're going to talk about that in this particular video. Where can we look on the graph here for a tangent of theta? And where can we look for a secant of theta? Well, we know where sine theta and cosine theta are now. The name tangent gives it away. When it was first defined and worked on, mathematicians drew a tangent to the circle through 1. Just touching. So this is a tangent. Now, if this triangle was extended, so I'm going to change this hypotenuse to green and extend it right up here. So we're not looking at the little triangle inside the unit circle anymore, but we're looking at this big green one. I think you can see that this time it's not the hypotenuse, it's the base that's worth 1. Now, they meet at right angles. The base is worth one unit because we're in a unit circle. 
So what is tan theta? Tan theta is this length opposite over adjacent. But because the base is worth 1, this opposite length is the tangent of theta. So now we can actually imagine, as this angle changes, we can imagine this point moving up the line. And as you can see, it's no longer confined inside the circle. The sine value can never get bigger than 1 or less than minus 1 because it's the height of the triangle. But as long as that triangle is inside the circle, the sine value will never escape that plus 1 to minus 1 range. And neither will the cosine. It will always be in here. But the tangent's different. When the angle's very small, you can see the tangent is very small. The tangent of the angle. So if I had 1 degree, the tangent of 1 degree would be 0, 0.00 something, or something very, very tiny. When it gets up to 45 degrees, I think you can see that at 45 degrees it would be inside a square. One unit high, one unit wide. So a one unit square, it would be the diagonal, and therefore the tangent would be 1. So tan 45 degrees is 1. What would tan 80 degrees be? Well, I think now you can see that if we went up 80 degrees, which is you know quite a steep angle up here somewhere, it's going to be a long way up before these meet. I think from memory it's about 5.6 or something. So one unit, two, three, it's a long way up above the board. What if I did tan 89 degrees? Well, now it's going, it's very, very nearly vertical. And it's going to take a long while before it gets to here. So we're going to be, I think from memory, I'm going to be embarrassed if this is wrong, but I think from memory it's up around 57 or something like that. And as the angles get steeper and steeper, you can see that it joins this tangent way, way, way up. So tangent values can get huge. Then you might try on your calculator, tan 59 degrees, oh sorry, tan of 89 degrees, just off 90, and 59 minutes, and 59.99 seconds or something. And you find it actually has to go millions of units before it meets the tangent. And of course, when you have tangent of 90 degrees, this line will be parallel to that, they'll never meet, and there's no answer. So if you try tan 90 degrees in your calculator, you won't get a result. How about that? So you can actually estimate the tangents. It's a bit hard estimating up here, but certainly these little ones, you can get a fair idea what tan 30 or tan 25 or something like that might be. That explains the tangent. So if that's tan theta, where do we find sec theta? Well, doesn't this look like Pythagoras' theorem again? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now if tan theta and 1, tan theta and 1 are the two short sides of the triangle, then this must be the long side. So this length is sec theta. So we don't normally think in terms of these reciprocal ratios like sec in cosec and cotangent. But if someone asks you what is sec 0 degrees. What's the secant of 0 degrees? You would imagine 0 degrees here, and the secant is the length of the hypotenuse, or the distance to the uh, tangent. And I think you can see it would equal 1. I think you can see the secant could never be less than 1, because the tangent we're measuring from here, and the closest this point ever gets to the tangent is 1. I think you can see that at 45 degrees, because we have one unit and one unit, this would be root 2, so the secant of 45 degrees would be root 2. And as the angle grows, you can see that the secant and the tangent will be very close in value, because when we have a really tall, thin triangle, the vertical side and the hypotenuse won't be greatly differing in length. They will differ, but not by much. But this gives you a concept of the secant.
What happens if the angles are in these quadrants, though? Well, let's discuss that. And uh, I hope this will help you understand tangents and secants a lot better. If we had... I will use purple. If we extend this line down here, so we're talking about this angle, in other words, this position, so P, X and Y. Remember that to get to it, we travel back here and down there. This distance is the cosine of theta. I should call it a different angle. Let's call it alpha. And this distance is the sine of alpha. Remember that the horizontal length or the width of the triangle is the cosine and the height is the sine. And notice that they're both negative. We go backwards along the x-axis and down compared to the y-axis. Negative, negative. And when we do the tangent, because we have sine over co cosine for the tangent and they're both negative, the tangent must be positive. So what we do is we refer this back to the tangent on this side where we have a positive value of 1 and a positive tangent and it's easier to understand than drawing another tangent over here and having negative 1 and a negative tangent which is just plain confusing. So we always refer to the tangent on the right hand side of the circle and that works very very well. So if someone asked me what's the tangent of 120 degrees, I should change colour. Let's do this in black. So if this angle here was, say, 120 degrees, and they asked me for the tangent, then I would extend this down here, and this value would be the tangent. Now, you can see that it's negative. I'll just write tan 120 degrees. You can see that it's negative, we've gone down, and you can see it's more than negative 1, because that's level with negative 1 on the, on the y-axis. And I think we get a, a value like minus 1.73 or something. Okay? Uh, what would the secant of 120 degrees be? It would be this length, which I think you'll find is 2. We'll talk about that when we come to exact ratios. Now that's a very complicated looking diagram. All I want you to be able to draw each afternoon when you practice this, for, for this ratio, for, sorry, for this uh, identity, I should make it an identity now. They're identically equal for every value theta. I want you to draw a unit circle and draw the tangent Mark this as one unit with a right angle. Draw an angle theta and identify that as tan theta and this here as the secant of theta. And it's tan squared theta plus one squared or plus one is six squared theta. And as you practice using this to identify the size of angles and you can use your calculator to check the results. You will get to know this ratio very, very well indeed. And that's the second of our three Pythagorean identities in trigonometry. I'm going to show you the, th the third one in the next video. But for the moment, I hope you found that profitable and enjoyable. I should get on this side because all the important stuff's there. Um, if you've enjoyed it, please click the like button. Leave a comment if it's inspired some sort of comment from you and uh, of course if you haven't already subscribed then I invite you to click on the subscribe button so you'll find out about future videos and I thank you for watching.